Thank you for joining us on Recovered Truths. My name is Greg Reeser, the pastor here at Crosswork Bible Church. We thank you for joining us and uh, we invite you to come out and meet with us at uh, Holiday Inn Express on the west side of town. That's 1000 Vandalay Drive, Frankfort, Kentucky. We meet here at the conference room. Uh, we usually start about 10 o'clock with fellowship and 1030 we get on with the study. And we're just going to ask that you bring a Bible and a pen and a piece of paper and an open and willingness mind to, to take a look at what God's Word actually says. Um, <clears throat> if you do not have a King James Bible, please let us know and we'll get one to you. Uh, we've got our phone number and email addresses, so there's a way to get a hold of us. <clears throat> so today what we're going to do, we're going to continue on the series of lessons that we started, uh, taking a look at how God's preserved His Word and the fact that God has preserved His Word throughout time, and we can have it and handle it right now today, and we know that that Bible that we're taking a look at is the King James Bible that we can have and hold for English-speaking people. Now, we put that English-speaking people on the end because King James Bible is not going to work for folks that are in Germany. So then, what do you need to do? Well, let's take the King James Bible and translate it to German. There you go. Um, but for English-speaking people, this is the Bible. And of course, the folks that are watching probably speak English. The folks that are here, we speak English. So that's why we care so much about that book. Um, so to, we're going to continue on that series. Um, we've already looked at the fact that how Satan goes about trying to uh, corrupt God's Word. <clears throat> we've already talked about how the fact that he, that he designs a way to put up a false version of the real thing. We've taken a look at that in the past, and uh, if you've not followed along with us, we ask that you go back and, and watch those videos. By the way, if you do miss any of these videos, we have them all on YouTube. Uh, if you go to Crosswork uh, Ministries on, on, on YouTube, we've got them there. If you go to Crosswork on Facebook, you can find them there as well, uh, or at least we'll get you to them. So this, all this is still out there. You don't have to, you know, call up the, the local FPB and ask them for a copy. Call us. We'll send a copy to you. Absolutely free of charge. We'll get you some stuff. Um, but we've taken a look at how Satan questioned God's word. Yea, hath God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Then you have Eve subtracts from it. She takes off that word freely. And then she adds to saying, we can't touch it. Then she waters it down saying, well, lest we die. And then Satan just flat out denies and says, you're not going to die at all. Thou shalt not surely die. And what God's doing is he's preserving his word through multiplicity of copies, through the revelation, inspiration, illumination, and preservation doctrines that we've already taken a look at. Now, the last time we started off in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, we're going to start off there as well. And what we're doing in the last message in this one is, let's just compare some verses. You get to make the choice, whatever choice you want to make, which version of the Bible you want to follow, or if you want to follow the King James Bible. Uh, we're not here to twist your arms. We're not here to make sure that you do this, that. It's, it's completely up to you. But we want to arm you with the information to make a, a decision based on knowledge. So 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 17, Paul says, For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. Paul was saying at that time there were, there were other corrupt versions of God's word going around. There's actually... Uh, you over and read Second Thessalonians, there were letters that people wrote saying that they were from Paul when they weren't. So it started way back then. And so you ask yourself, is, is, has Satan changed his tactics? And the answer is no. He's always put up a false version of what God's doing in a way to draw you away from God's truth. And we find those today in modern versions of the Bible. Now, what we're, what we're doing, the last time we took a look at how, and the only reason we're doing ESV, there's two main reasons. One is because that's the most popular, currently most popular Bible on the market. King James Bible is the third most, and of course, NIV, everybody's kind of moved away from that, and that one's fallen down on the wayside, but 
The ESV is the currently the, the most popular, most, most purchased Bible. So we're just going to take a look at those. And the other reason is because I know a lot of people out here in Frankfurt that use it. Frankly speaking, I'm not going to hold any punches. I want you to know what the Bible actually says that you're carrying around. And I want you to be mindful of that. The first thing that we looked at is it took out the verse in, in Romans 13, 9. It took out in the passage there that thou shalt not bear false witness because that version does. We've taken a look at how it says that Goliath was killed by Elhanan, not David. Even though we all know it was David, we find out through Scripture that it was the brother of, of Goliath that Elhanan killed. Um, in Luke, it takes away the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. In Philippians 2, it takes away the deity of Christ. And in Colossians chapter 1, the ESV takes away the blood of Christ. Now, if those things aren't enough, if the deity of Christ, the blood of Christ, the virgin, the virgin birth of Christ, if that's not enough, as we said last time, I'm not sure what we can do to help you. If, if we want to explain those things away, <clears throat> by all means. But one of the things that we found out the last time is in, in Titus chapter 1, verse 2, it tells us that God cannot lie. While Satan is the father of lies. John 8, 44. So, when we take a look at these things, one's right and one's wrong. It's that simple. So we're just, we're just wanting to give you information to make decisions based on the book itself. Not, not what I say, not what some other pastor says, but I want you to be able to go to the book and say, this is why I believe this, and I can trust this book. So go over to Mark chapter 1. <clears throat> and, and again, it may seem like we're picking on it, but... We care about what the Word actually says. And I know everybody says that. But we legitimately do. Otherwise, we would just go along with everybody else and just say, well, use whatever version you want. We don't care. Come and join us. We'll all be confused together. But that's not... God is not the author of confusion. He wants us to be... And I know everybody says, well, the, the King James is so hard to read. It's really not. It's a fourth grade reading level. While ESV is a college level reading level. Now you think about that real quick. You could you could give a you could give a fourth grader the King James Bible and he could understand it, and you could give a college person the ESV and they would still have some trouble with it. Now which one would be better? Notice Mark chapter one. Mark chapter one verse two in the King James Bible says, As it is written in the prophets. Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Now, what happens here is in Mark chapter 1 verse 2, in the King James Bible, it says, As it is written, where? In the prophets. Alright? So, right off the bat, the, the author here tells us, if you want to know where I'm quoting from, it's in the prophets. Go find it. Okay. Now what we find out is in it, it, the, the verse that he quotes there, Behold, I, I send my messenger before thy face. You know where that's found? In the book of Malachi, chapter 3. And so, then we continue on. Verse, verse 3, The voice of one crying in the wilderness... Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make thy paths straight. Do you know where that's quoted? The book of Isaiah. So what happens here in Mark chapter 1, verse 2, it says, as it is written in the prophets, and here's the two places. Malachi and Isaiah. You go and you find that. Do you know how you find that? You just study it. Or you go get a Bible that's got cross-references and it'll show you where it is. But I want you to notice... What's the ESV say? Well, let's take a look. The ESV, Mark 1, verse 2, says, As it is written in Isaiah the prophet. So, <clears throat> notice. Where does Mark 1, 2 
say that the verse it's getting ready to tell us where it is. It says it's where? In Isaiah. Notice, it doesn't say it was said by Isaiah. Notice it says it is written in Isaiah the prophet. Do you know what that means? The verse that he's getting ready to quote better be in Isaiah. It better be written down in the book of Isaiah. Do you realize that verse 2 there when he says, Behold, I send my messenger before your face who will prepare your way. Do you know the problem is? That verse is not found in the book of Isaiah. Search it. I'm going to tell you, you're going to search in vain because it's not there. Verse 3, the voice of one crying in the word, that one is there. So let me ask you a question. If you've got a book that tells you a verse is written somewhere, wouldn't you expect it to be there? I would. So then that leaves us with one of two conclusions. One, Mark had no clue what he was talking about. And if that's true, can we trust anything that Mark says throughout the book of Mark? I'm going to submit to you, Mark did know what he was talking about. Also, next thing would be, the Holy Spirit didn't even know what he wrote in the book of Isaiah. Now that one's a tough one. Because I know for a fact the Holy Spirit knew what he said. The Holy Spirit spoke. That's that revelation and inspiration. Inspiration. Written down. Now, I wouldn't be so upset if that version said it was said by Isaiah, even though he didn't say it either. But the fact that it says it is written. Go with me real quick. Hold your place there. Go with me real quick to Matthew. Matthew chapter 4. With the tempting of Jesus Christ. Tempting to Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 4, verse 7. Jesus said, said unto him, It is written again. You go on down, and he says, <clears throat> verse, verse 10, then, Jesus say, then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written. Do you know what? You can take those where he quotes it and go back and find them in the Scriptures because it is written there. You go over here to Mark 1 and it says, as it is written in, the, in Isaiah the prophet, and it's not there. The Holy Spirit knew what He said. And that tells me that the ESV is wrong here. Which tells me that the manuscript that it was translated from is wrong. So if you want to talk about manuscripts, let's talk about manuscripts. Because the manuscript says that right there. And I know everybody says, well, the ESV is the closest one to the original manuscripts. The problem is, is the manuscript is wrong. It's a false version of the real thing. So what you have is a translation of a false version of the real thing. So we know... The Holy Spirit knew what He's talking about. And that's why in King James Bible He says, as it is written in the prophets. Plural. More than one. Not one singular person saying, well, here it is written in Isaiah. So then, we would have to conclude that Isaiah is not complete. If that verse is supposed to be there, and then Isaiah is not complete. And if that book's not complete then how can I trust it? How can I trust a book that's lied to me six times already that we've looked at? And again, <clears throat> this is up to you. We're putting the ball in your court. We are arming you with information so that you can make a, a conscious decision based on understanding. Not some emotional plea. We want your faith to be grounded in what the Word actually says. There's a couple things here that I want to mention. The 1611 Old English that's used in the translation of the King James Bible, it's a dead language. You know what that means? It's not going to change. 
it's never going to change. The words here that we have in the King James Bible, they're not going to change. Do you know what happens with the modern American English? It's a corrupt language that changes daily. Do yourself a favor. Ask your kid a question. <laughs> and find out some of the terminology that they say that didn't exist four years ago and tell me that you want to you want to trust your eternal life based on an, an ever-evolving corrupt version of language that we call the American language I sit and I sit and listen to kids sometimes and I'm thinking that word doesn't exist I just read the other day where Merriam-Webster has put the word irregular in. That's not a word. Never has been. But because we allowed the English language to degenerate over and over again throughout time, we're just allowing junk in. You remember when I was in high school, they said, ain't ain't a word. Ain't ain't in the dictionary. You know what it, it is now. It wasn't then. You take a look at those things, you're thinking, man, that just... What's going on with our language? Well, old, the Old English, which the King James Bible is written in, it's a dead language. It means it doesn't change. The American language, it changes all the time. Why do you think that the ESV is now the number one where the NIV used to be number one? Because things have changed. Well, no, it's because we found new manuscripts. No, you didn't. You're changing it. That's why you've got words like sovereign that you add for the King James, or in the ESV version. The word sovereign is not in the King James Bible. And the reason why is because that word wasn't around when they wrote the Bible in the originals or the translation. That's a fairly new word that's only found, by the way, in most modern versions, uh, specifically the ESV, which is why you've got most Calvinists love the ESV because that word's in there. And they get to teach their doctrine and say that the word's in there. Let's take a look at some other things that are very important. <clears throat> Go to Romans chapter 3. And again, uh, we're, we're not doing this to be mean. I want you to have information to make a, a proper decision based on knowledge. We're just giving the information. Um, here, here's a big one. <clears throat> and we're going to look at a bunch of different ver verses here that goes along with this. Um, <clears throat> and we're going to look at this one in particular because I think this one's very important. Faith of Christ and faith in Christ. Now, to you that might not make a big deal, but what's the difference of faith of Christ and faith in Christ? Faith of Christ is the actual faith that Christ put on display. Faith in Christ is what we put in what He did. Okay? So let's take a look at this. Romans chapter 3, verse 22. Even and Here's the King James Bible. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all, and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. Notice, the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ. It's the faith of Jesus Christ. The faith that Jesus Christ put on display when He went to the cross. That's how we have the righteousness of God. Let's read the ESV. Romans 3.22 The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe, for there is no distinction. Now you notice how it changed it from the faith of Christ to faith in Christ. He says the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Question. Can the faith of Christ change right now today? Did what he is what he did almost two thousand years ago on the cross, can he go back and change his mind and say, Nope, I don't want to do that? 
The answer is no. It's a completed thing. He even said on the cross, what? It is finished. It's a done deal. He can't change that. So what we need to do is take a look at that. That's a, that's, a main, that's a main difference right there, faith of Christ and faith in Christ. I was actually talking to a gentleman years ago, and he says, I, gave, I, I show that verse to people all the time, and he, he goes through and he's pointing out, and he says, no, this is what it says, by faith in, in Jesus Christ. And I said, no, read that again. And he was a King James guy. And he says, well, that does say faith of Jesus Christ, doesn't it? And it changed his thought process. And he said, well, I've got to go back and fix all the stuff that I've been teaching wrong for years. Go over to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. Let's take a look at these verses. <clears throat> Verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, notice, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we, even we have believed in Jesus Christ. Right there you've got them both. What is it that allows us to be justified is the faith of Jesus Christ. But by faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ. That's your belief. That's your faith in His faithfulness. You see that? Now... <clears throat> You take a look at the ESV and it says, Yet we know that a person is not justified by the works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. So we also have believed in Christ Jesus in order to be justified by faith in Christ. It does it twice. And you notice, <clears throat> what is it? What has he got there? Because we got the faith of Christ twice in, 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 in Galatians 2.16. And the ESV changes the faith in. So here you've got your faith in your faith of Jesus Christ. That puts a whole lot on you, doesn't it? Well, I believe that I believe that Jesus Christ died. Well, that's not enough. I believe in the faith of Jesus Christ to do what He did on the cross. It's His faithfulness. <clears throat> Keep on going in verse 20. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave Himself for me. That's the King James Bible. We live in this flesh by the faith of the Son of God. Notice ESV. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I live, I now live in the flesh. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. If you don't get that, folks, you're going to live your life in this flesh by your faith? The King James Bible right there says that you're going to be able to... He's going to live His life through you by His faith. It's a big difference. We've got some more that we need. Let's go through these. Um, Galatians 3.22 Galatians 3.22 King James Bible But the Scripture hath concluded all under sin that... Here's the purpose. The promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. There you've got those that believe in what? The faith of Christ. Let's take a look at your ESV. Galatians 3.22 But the Scripture imprisoned everything under sin. It's easier to read. Verse 22 But the Scripture imprisoned everything under sin. So, the, so that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. So, according to ESV, you're going to take and believe in your faith to do... That's pretty haughty and high-minded, don't you think? What we do is we believe in Christ's faithfulness because it's His issue, His life, His faithfulness that we rely on, not ours. 
Philippians 3 9. <clears throat> and I know we're running low on time. Let's finish off with this one. <clears throat> Philippians 3 9. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Again, that's your faith in his faithfulness. The ESV reads, And be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith. Now you think about that. The righteousness of God that depends on faith and your faith is the issue in that? So you're telling me the ESV says that the righteousness of God depends on your faith. Your, your faith is what makes God's righteousness good or not. Again, that, that can't be so. The righteousness of God is based upon the faith of Christ. Not our faith. And we by simple faith believe in His faithfulness to do what He did on the cross and rest in that. The Bible issue is more than just words on a page, folks. The Bible issue has more to do with Christ living His life through you, in and through you, and to produce a life that would be pleasing to the Father. And when we get out of His way and let His Word work in and through us and quit trying to make it about us, just let His Word work because of the faithfulness of Christ Jesus. We hope that you take to heart some of the things that we've talked about and allow those, the verses, to convince you otherwise. We thank you for listening today. And until next time, Grace and peace.